Hello friends. So I've always seen this use velocity hook in the frame or motion documentation, and it's a pretty cool idea. So essentially how this works is it looks something like this. You'll have some kind of motion value, and this hook will give you back the velocity of change of whatever that value is. So as an example, they have something like this down here, and this is just based on drag, but essentially they're just changing the scale and the color based on how fast you're dragging it, right? So if I drag it really slow, it doesn't change much. If I drag it really fast, it changes more. And this is pretty cool, but I never really came up with any cool ideas on how to use it, but I actually found one in the wild that I thought was cool. So I was gonna show it to you guys and we can see how it works. So here's the website that I'm talking about. This is, let's see, play.makemepulse.com. I'll put a link in the description. And they have this section once you scroll down a little bit where we'll see this text kind of comes in from the bottom. And depending on how fast we actually scroll, we get this skewing effect of the text down at the bottom and it goes faster depending on how fast we scroll and skews more depending on how fast we scroll. And this is actually a really, really simple effect with this hook. So let's go ahead and see how it works. Okay, so I'm starting with a completely blank canvas here. All that I have is a single React component with this section inside of it. And we need to start by actually adding some kind of state that we can track the velocity of. In that case, for us, it's going to be our scroll. So how far an element has actually scrolled through the page. And to be able to do that, we're gonna need some height to actually be able to scroll. So let's start by just adding some basic styles to this section. I'm using Tailwind CSS, but of course you can use normal CSS, doesn't really matter. But for me, I'm gonna start by just adding some class names. I'm gonna give this a height of 1000 viewport height. Just give us a bunch of room to scroll. I'll give it a background of neutral 50 and then a text color of 950. So it's essentially just black and white. And if we save that, we should now have a bunch of room that we can scroll over here in our section on the right. Now we can go ahead and remove our text. And in place of our text, we're just gonna add an additional div with a set of styles on this to make this div sticky to this outer wrapping section. And we'll kind of see why we need that as we go through this. But for now, let's just follow along with these styles. So this div is going to have some class names again, position sticky, a top of zero, a display of flex, a height of screen, item center, so if you're not using CSS, or if you're just using normal CSS, rather, this is just a line item center, and then an overflow of hidden, and this should be sufficient for now. We need the overflow of hidden because we're gonna have a whole bunch of text that's running off the right side of the page, and we don't want that to actually allow for a horizontal scroll bar. And we need this sticky and top zero because we want essentially this box to stick to the outer wrapping box. As an example, let's just give this some background color. We'll say BG red 500, something like that. And instead of height screen, let's do let's say 50 viewport height. And what we're gonna see now is that as we scroll, this box actually stays in the viewport, which is exactly what we want because we wanna have some content that is stuck inside of this box, which we can then animate on scroll. I'm gonna undo those background color changes as well as the height changes. And just as a placeholder of some content, I'm just gonna add, let's say a paragraph tag like this. And you can just use lorem ipsum text or if you have whatever text you want, we're just gonna use just text instead of having graphics and things for this example. Obviously add this however you want. But I'm just gonna add this big quote that I copied off of the internet. And I'm just gonna drop some styles on here to make this a little bit bigger. The only thing that we should really probably note on here is that I'm adding a transform origin of bottom left. This is just gonna make that little skew animation look a little bit nicer when we get to it. Not completely necessary, but I thought it looked better. Then we're gonna add a white space of no rep so all of this text can run off the right side. And then the rest of this is just making the text bigger, making it uppercase, giving it a font weight of 900, and then changing the line height a little bit. And if we save that, we should now have something that looks like this. We can make this a little bit bigger if we want. And from here, we should be able to see that everything just kind of follows along as we scroll down and is ready to be animated. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, the value that we're gonna be basing our animation off of is the scroll position, and more specifically, the scroll position of this section. So how far we've scrolled past this section. And the way that we're gonna do that is using the use scroll hook from Frame or Motion. So import from Frame or Motion, use scroll, and we're also going to need to import the use ref hook from React. So use ref, hook all of this together. We're gonna to start by creating a target reference and adding this to our section. So we can say ref is equal to target ref like this. Then down below, we can instantiate our use scroll hook and then tell it that the element that we actually want to target is our target ref like so. And use scroll is gonna give us back a couple of different values. The one that we want specifically is scroll y progress. And this is essentially just going to give us a value between zero and one, where zero Zero is essentially 0%, one is 100%, and that's denoting how far we've actually scrolled this section through the viewport. We can actually listen to this value change by adding a use motion value event hook that also comes from frame or motion. We'll just pass it in our scroll y progress. 
tell it that we want to listen to changes to this value. And then we can just console log out the latest value. So we'll say latest console.log latest like this. And now if I start to scroll, we can look in our console here and see that we have this value between zero and one as we scroll up and down. Now, as mentioned, we don't actually just want this raw value. What we actually want is the velocity of change of this value. And that also is really easy to get with our hook. So that is just importing the use velocity velocity hook and all that this is going to do is take in another motion value so in our case this motion or this scroll y progress value right here we can call this say scroll velocity we'll set that equal to use velocity and pass it in our scroll y progress now instead of actually listening to changes to scroll y progress let's listen to changes to scroll velocity we'll clear out our console and now as we scroll we should be seeing different values so notice that as i scroll up we're going to get negative values and as we scroll down we're going to get positive values and if we go really slow these numbers are going to be very small and if we go faster they're going to be much larger and taking note of the numbers that we see here are essentially how we can get our range for how much we want to change our element, so the skew and the transform, depending on our scroll. Closing that up, I really think the easiest way to actually see this all come together is to, you know, just kind of chug through it. So I'm gonna remove the log that we just had right there, and I'm gonna import one last hook from Frame or Motion called use transform. And what this hook is going to allow us to do is take some input value and transform it into some other value that value then can be used for our animation so by example i want to add a skew and that's essentially what's giving us that kind of left right lean to our text based on this input value so what i could say is something like const uh, skew x is equal to use transform this will then take in our scroll velocity like this it will then take in two arrays where the first array is the input range and the second is the output range so by example those values that we saw a second ago were pretty small. So we could say anything between say negative 0.5 and 0.5, we want to transform into some number of degrees. So we could say, say 45 degrees and let's say minus 45 degrees. And in order to actually use this, we're gonna to need to turn our paragraph tag into a motion paragraph tag. So we'll say import motion from frame or motion up here at the top. We'll then take our paragraph tag and turn this into a motion.p. If you're not familiar with frame or motion, this unlocks a whole bunch of different props that we can use to declaratively animate our element. But most importantly for this animation is just that it allows us to pass in these values that we're gonna get from this use transform right here into a style tag. So I can now say style just like normal and just pass in our skew X here. And now as I start to scroll, we should start to see that this actually skews our element left and right. Now this is a little bit harsh, right? Because immediately when I stop, everything just kind of snaps into place. It's a little bit jagged and we can smooth that out by adding some spring physics. I know we're using like every frame or motion hook in the book here, but I think it's a pretty good learning experience. So up at the top, one more time, we'll import use spring. And I'm actually gonna change the name of my skew X here to skew X raw. And my new skew X, so skew X will be set equal to use spring. We'll pass in skew X raw. And we can also adjust how this spring physics actually work. I'm not going to go too much into this for this example, but I found that these settings work pretty well. And now when we start to scroll, we should see that this looks a little bit smoother, right? So when I stop, everything kind of brings back into place. It doesn't immediately just snap directly to zero. And this is really the basis of this animation. We can now go back through the same kind of steps that we just took here. And instead of animating our skew, we can also animate our X transform. So to do that, I'm literally just going to copy the same value for skew X x raw drop that in down here and we'll say we'll just call this x raw now x actually isn't going to be based on velocity it's just going to be based on our straight scroll y progress up here so we'll just drop that in and we'll say from zero to one we want to then animate from say zero pixels to we can just pick a number that's not going to completely scroll this off the screen so we could say let's go with four thousand something like that we're also going to want to add spring physics to this so now we can say const x is equal to use spring, pass that in x raw, and finally just drop our x into our paragraph tag down here. Now, one thing I did backwards there actually is my 4,000 should actually be minus 4,000. But now we should see that as I scroll, our element not only kind of bends, but it also transforms left and right based on whether or not I'm scrolling up or down. Making that a little bit bigger, scroll really slow, we get a little bit of a transform, a little bit of a bend. If we go really, really fast, it bends completely over to the side. And I think that that is pretty cool. 
All of the source code for this, as always, is available on my website, along with a whole bunch of other cool animations for React and Framer Motion, including even a full hero section that I put together, which uses the same kind of effect. If you got anything out of this video, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Beyond that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.